Hey guys, today I'm back in Besiege and I want to try making a plane powered by cannons. And when I say cannons, I don't just mean something like this. Instead, I want to make a functional engine with these cannons and then make a plane powered by that engine. So let's get right into it. So starting out in the sandbox here, you see the first thing I'm doing is putting on some logs and this is to build a very simple test setup for some different weapons. Now the first one I'm starting with here is actually going to be the crossbow and you see I got that on some sliders here and it shoots pretty well, but I wasn't really in love with it immediately. So what I did is actually turned up the power power to 20 times and this worked but it was kind of weak here and I knew I didn't really want to work with this so I put down a cannon instead and this is a lot heavier we're turning up the power to five times you can see here it has a lot more power it's way more than I need and realistically this is definitely going to be the best choice now I moved this over to the side and I attached it right to the starting block and once I did this I got a lot more stability here and once I lowered the power to just two times you can see it's behaving a lot better so with that done I started working on a crankshaft and I wanted to see if I get this to start spinning it. So I put down a swivel here, and on that, I actually put down a ballast, two more swivels, and a few more ballast blocks. Now, I basically copied this exact same design over, and after that, I locked the other side with a pin. And it was sort of working. It was spinning, but it was not exactly holding together the way I wanted. So I used some braces to just keep it rigid, and after I did that, you can see here it is a lot better. Now, I should be able to attach to either of those two clumps of steering hinges and get this to start applying some power. So with that, I put down some ballast blocks, and and I attached them using braces right to the crankshaft. Now I put down two cannons on top and I also put down two on the bottom just to get the weight distribution a bit better and I wanted to give it a test here. Now it wasn't exactly great. You'll notice the cannons fell straight down but they were rotating the crankshaft around a little bit here. So I used a brace to link them together better and after I had that I was able to pretty consistently get this to go around and now I just wanted to get these to stay flat. So to do that I put down a couple of swivel joints and I put down more of these sliders. This allows the cannons to pivot up and down while also remaining on the same plane and you can see here I get some pretty consistent motion. So next I expanded out the crankshaft and added on two more swivel joints. This is going to allow me to copy over what I have and attach a second bank of cannons. I did have a small problem though and that's that I'm going to need to have the slider start fully expanded rather than fully contracted. That's actually not super easy to get though because they don't have any setting to switch that and I tried a few different things that seemed to work but I wasn't really happy with the stability of any of these so I decided to just copy copy the cannons over for now and what I wanted to do is figure out a way to expand them out and then have them grab onto the crankshaft. So once I got these on loosely here you can see the crankshaft still able to rotate and I should be able to get this connected right up. Now starting out I put down two grabbers here and the plan was to pull over the grabbers to meet up with these two blocks that I'm bracing to the crankshaft. Now if I start these two blocks pinned in place I should be able to pull this right over and have them grab on and it did seem to work. You can see the sliders are fully expanded but it wasn't grabbing for some reason so I just switched around the location of where the grabbers were and it did work but you'll notice that's at a slight angle and I could fix that pretty easily. If you use 2D couplers to lock it in place, after I get it locked in I should be able to get rid of these decouplers and have it still pivot up and down. And giving it a test it does seem to work. It's able to move up and down fine but you'll notice the crankshaft isn't really working anymore. And that's because I need to get the timing set for each side but first I actually wanted to add on two more pistons here. So I just copied them straight over and added on a swivel joint that allows me to rotate them 90 degrees. Now inside that in place, just to make sure to brace in that swivel joint and you can see here I'm able to rotate them up and it does seem to work. At any time I should be able to have a cannon firing and that means I'll get consistent rotation. Now all there's left to do on this is get the timings right but that's going to be a hard thing to do. Now you can see I started out here putting in a sensor and this is going to detect when there's a cannon in front of it and when it does it should start shooting. And you can see it does work. When the cannon goes in front of it it starts shooting but it actually shoots all of the cannons. So I just had to make sure to set the keybinds to only do the right cannon here and I actually added in one more as well but it really didn't seem to be working quite right. The problem is, as the crankshaft bounces up and down, the cannons seem to quite randomly fire, and that just makes it bind up. So I used two angle meters instead, and I figured that these should work a bit better. These should see where in the rotation the crankshaft is, and if it's at the right point, it should start to fire. And already here, you see it is beginning to actually rotate it around, and get a few good shots out of this. But it isn't super consistent, but I figured it's probably because I only have a single piston shooting at the moment, and once I add more, it should be better. So bad it on some more here and I forgot those put in place just to make sure to get their timings right but I wasn't really thrilled with the results. It still wasn't quite working out right and also as the crankshaft bounced up and down it seemed to just completely steal a ton of motion. So I actually separated out the crankshaft slightly and I added on two swivel joints here and I pinned them in place. This gave it a lot more rigidity and you can see here it's not falling apart as easily but it still wasn't exactly what I wanted. It just seemed to be a little inconsistent and you can see here I put in a gear and I put in one on the top as well. I'm going to use a four bar linkage to link these 
piece together. Now, I also thought this idea was going to be a lot cooler because I kind of wanted to make an actual camshaft here. So once you get that all hooked up, you can see as the crankshaft rotates, it also rotates that gear. After putting down another block here, I put down a suspension. Now, this is going to hang from the top of that block, and I also put down a torch. So you can see here, I put down a couple of ballasts on the suspension, and after that, I put down a gear, and on that gear, I put down another ballast. Now, I offset it slightly. You can see it pushed it all the way up to the top here, and as it rotates around, it pushes down on the spring, and that should cause the cannons to fire. Now, it wasn't working at first. It seemed to be missing it a little bit, so I angled it down slightly to hit it better, and now you can see it does end up igniting it. So I copied over the torch to get the other cannon going, and I actually copied over the entire assembly as well to get the other pistons working. Now, once I got that all in place, you can see here I used a brace and I connected the two gears together. I also had to offset the ballast on the other gear, and this is to create a slightly different timing so it shoots at the right time. And how you can see with only two cannons going on each of the pistons, it's rotating it over really easily here, and I think there's a good reason for this. As the torches push down on the cannons, they constantly fire the cannons until they eventually get out of position. This means that no matter what speed the engine's running at, I get a really consistent amount of power out of it, and this means that it should, in theory, work pretty well here. Now, I copy this over to the other side, and I want to get the other two pistons going here. It was pretty similar overall. The only difference, I had to add in a single steering hinge to slightly offset one of the pistons, but once I got those all in place here, I linked it together, and I wanted to give it a test. And you can see it was working. Everything's going over fine, and I think this would work, but I noticed the motion was a little irregular here, and I wanted to smooth that out a bit. So that's why I actually decided to add in a block in the front here and start working out a flywheel. So up on that block, put down a swivel joint, and on that, I put down a lot of wood and a lot of ballast. Now, this should have a pretty high moment of inertia, and you can see here as it starts to spin up, it seems to work pretty well here at smoothing out that motion, and it gets up to a pretty good speed. Now, just for fun here, I wanted to try putting on a propeller on the top and seeing how it would do. I was pretty sure this was going to get nowhere, but it seemed like kind of something fun. So you can see here, I put down a gear, and on that, I'm actually attaching a bunch of ballast to the center wood piece, and I'm giving it a shot now. Now, this first test wasn't exactly what I had in mind, so I braced it together a bit better and gave it another shot here. This time, it seemed to be spinning up pretty well here, but I wanted a little bit more speed on the propeller blade, and for that, I could add in another gear ratio, and that's what I'm doing here. Now, if you get that large gear pin in place, put down another small one, and now I have a lot of problems. The thing is, the crankshaft really can't seem to spin up fast enough to make this work, so it sort of just gets stuck. And of course, even just reverting back to the other design and trying to drop it, it gets nowhere fast. It just drops straight down, and the only thing slowing it is the fact that propeller blades naturally have a lot of air resistance. So I tried this again, and I'm completely cheating this time. I'm using a powered gear, and even this is nowhere near good enough to get off the ground. Now, I knew that was probably never going to work, but what I wanted to try instead here is bracing all of the pin places of the engine together. After that, I should be able to try unpinning the entire thing and making it fly. Now, for this as well, I'm copying over the propeller, and I'm moving it over to the front of the plane. Now, I decided to keep one extra gear ratio on this just because I thought it might be helpful, and also the engine, since it's able to rotate at any speed realistically, even if the engine gets slowed down a lot, it should still be able to spin up the propeller, and here it mostly seemed to be working. And if I try dropping it here, it actually does pull itself forward a little bit. So I was thinking this should work as long as I get good enough wings and control surfaces on it. Now the first thing I wanted to do is add on the tail, and this is pretty easy here. You can see I'm putting in some wing segments now, and after I got those all hooked up there, I wanted to start working on the main wings. Now the positioning of these was pretty important, because I wanted it to be in just the right spot so that I'd maintain level flight without any extra controls. Now, once I got a few wing panels on those, I decided to put it on the other side as well, and I braced up the tail here, and given it a test here in the air, it instantly stalled the engine, which wasn't that great, but it did seem to at least be gliding down, which was a pretty good start. Now, to hopefully improve the propeller, what I wanted to do here was expand out where the blades were, and this is to give me even more speed on them. Now, I've done this trick before in my last plane, and it seemed to work really well, so I figured I might as well give it a shot here, and already you can see the flight is a lot more level, but I am still falling, and also you'll notice I'm rotating over to the left. That's probably really bad, and I think it's a side effect of the torque that the engine is producing. So to hopefully combat that, what I wanted to do is add on some control surfaces here that I'm able to rotate around, and this already was a little bit better, but I still was having that problem where I was moving over to the left. Now my next plan was to reduce the weight of the plane a lot, so I started out here with the flywheel. Now I can get rid of a lot of the wood in 
the middle, and this actually doesn't really decrease the moment of inertia that much, but it decreases the weight a lot, and that's already a huge weight save. Now, I also added on some tail control here, and this will allow me to pitch up a lot faster. I was hoping this would help me maintain level flight a bit better, and with that, I also started bracing together the wings to make them a little bit more rigid. And you'll also notice here I'm putting in a wheel to the very front of the plane. This wheel should spin up and produce a torque opposite to the one the propeller is, and hopefully cancel it out. But once I had it on here, it wasn't really working, and also it was glitching out a lot. It seemed to be just moving around erratically in the front of the plane, and this wasn't that helpful. Now I decided to get rid of that wheel, and you'll also notice the propeller is already a lot bigger. And things were looking better. I was maintaining almost perfectly level flight here, but I still was moving over to the side, and I have no way of steering this at all. So next up, what I wanted to do is increase the size of the wings, and this is just to make it fly a little bit slower, and hopefully make it a lot easier to control in the future. So once I got those extensions on there, they were a little flimsy, but they did seem to work, and I wasn't certain, but it seemed like I was beginning to maintain some level flight here. Just to make sure though, I made the wings even bigger one more time, and now I was pretty confident in this thing's ability to at least mostly fly. But even in this test, it's still turning over to the left, and I need a way to solve that. Now I tried a different wheel here. This one's a little bit bigger and has some attachment points on the sides, and you'll notice I'm putting ballast there. These ballasts are going to mean that I can spin the wheel a lot slower to get the same amount of torque, and that should hopefully decrease the amount of problems I'm having. But even once I had these in place, I had to raise up the wheel slightly to stop interfering with everything below it. And you can see here in this test, it's still getting really glitchy. It's just really hard to keep this wheel stable because it has to go so fast to combat the torque of the engine. So I was kind of thinking at this point, what if I just added another engine that goes in the other direction? This should solve all my problems since I'll be producing a torque exactly opposite of the first one. And let's get that copied over here. I wanted to give it a test, but it kind of fell apart a lot. The sliders just kept popping off of it and nothing seemed to attach in the way that I wanted. After a lot of trouble though, I eventually got something that held together, but once I got everything attached up here, I wanted to give it a test, and it just wasn't that great. The propellers were interfering with each other quite often, and it wasn't really as easy as just pulling one forward since they sort of wobble back and forth as they fly. I even tried linking together the engines to make it a little bit more stable. This didn't really seem to change anything though, and it was still really difficult to keep everything together. The second engine also adds a lot of lag, and all the extra cannonballs are really starting to push this to the limit, and what I decided to do was just revert back to my single propeller design and see what I could do from there. Now after a while, I decided to add on some yaw control, and ordinarily I don't really find these to be super necessary, but in this case, since it's at such a low speed, I'm able to sort of turn the entire plane quickly, and this seemed to help me a lot. After that, I also started filling in the gaps in the wings, and this is to give me even more lift. I figured the more lift I had and the slower I was going, generally the better things would be. And in the first couple tests here, I was actually getting somewhat of a flight. It's a little hard to get this going where I wanted to, but it was going relatively level, and as long as it didn't do any crazy movements, things seemed to be going okay. Now, I also wanted to really get rid of the problem of this thing turning, so what I did here is made the roll control really long, and this gives me a lot more authority. And you can see in this test near the ground, I'm able to mostly combat it. The whole plane's still a little squirrely, it's very hard to control this, and ends up pitching up very often, and once it does that, it's pretty much just over. But as long as I am very careful, I can mostly get this going where I want it to. So guys, thanks for watching. It's definitely kind of a weird experimental build. I wasn't exactly sure if a cannon-powered engine really would have enough power, but thankfully it seemed to be just barely enough to get this flying. So if you have any other cool engine ideas, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below as well. And otherwise, till next time.